The film begins with Michael Stigman and Robert Bobby Trench approaching a cafe in a one-horse community. A small savings and loan store is conveniently located across the street. While Stigman takes a booth and flirts with the waitress, Trench buys a safe deposit box while inspecting the establishment. After that, he hops across the street to the diner. Trench inquires about their donuts, to which the waitress enthusiastically praises their quality. They order for some to go, and Stigman rushes to the restroom. Moments later, he activates the fire alarm. Stigman tosses his lighter onto the disorganized grill, sparking a grease fire that spreads swiftly. They step outside just as the explosion knocks out the glass. The scene shifts one week earlier. The same couple is on their way to visit their friend El Toro at Papi Grico's ranch in Sonora, Mexico. Toro was caught skimming and beheaded. Bobby gives over a box of counterfeit passports and receives a cash envelope. He was expecting cocaine, but Greco is agitated following Toro's treachery. Trench returns the cash and tells Greco to retain the passports. Greco now owes Bobby a favor. Stepping outdoors, Stigman is a true wise ass. Greco's workers had buried many fowl in the yard up to their necks. However, even these simple targets are too difficult to eliminate. After taunting them, he grabs a gun and shoots them all in quick succession. On their way back to the United States, their car is halted at the border by a large group of gun-wielding soldiers. Trench is taken into separate interrogation rooms, where it is revealed that he is an embedded DA agent. The drugs he was supposed to carry was proof against Poppy Greco. Since it failed, Trench's employer, Jessup, wishes to remove him. Trench lies, claiming he is about to flip the newly beheaded Toro. He only needs a bit more time. Jessup agrees and releases the two. Later, we see Trench and Deb at a motel having a post talk. Trench is emotionally and genuinely detached, avoiding commitment, whereas Deb has a boyfriend. She asks Trench if he ever truly loved her. He said he genuinely meant to. Trench informs Deb that Stigman intends to rob a bank where Greco has been laundering $3 million in narcotics proceeds. Since the narcotics bus failed, he wants to charge him with tax evasion and RICO. She reluctantly agrees to run it by Jessa. Trench goes over to Stigman's flat to inform him that they will rob the bank. Stigman is skeptical of how fiercely the Border Patrol pursued them and lifts his gun to shoot Trench. Law is merely a joke. They decide to observe Pappy Greco at his mistress's house to devise a timeline. The Baha'i faith is active. This brings us back to the diner that blew up. With the diner closed, the cops will be unable to respond to the bank robbery. That's fantastic because they'll be taking the bank the next day. Deb tells him that she will have assets ready to catch Stigman by 3.05 p.m. Meanwhile, across town, Stigman encounters some nefarious characters of his own. They are Navy. It turns out that Stigman was introduced to take the drug money for clandestine naval operations funding, or some other similar MacGuffin. He exits the area with some incredibly advanced weaponry. On the morning of the robbery, they assume their masks and raid the police station, locking the depressed cops in with their most recent incarcerated clients. The heist goes off without a hitch, but for some reason, three million becomes forty-three million. Both males are taken aback and keep an eye on the clock, knowing it will take longer to collect this much money. They begin loading the getaway car, and Trench notices that the cavalry is nowhere to be found. It's a ghost town, and they can simply get away. We are introduced to Earl, a mysterious guy who wants his money back. The poor bank manager learns the hard way how important money is to him. Stig and Trench walk out to the desert to seek for riches. Stigman gets the upper hand on Trench and pulls his rifle, just as Trench was about to do the same. Trench cannot get his gun out, but he does have his DA badge. Stigman was ordered to murder Trench, but instead he grazed him. Throughout his task, he formed a genuine friendship with the guy. Walking closer to the injured Trench, Stigman notices the badge. Stigman causes him to assume Trench is dirty, but he isn't certain. He abandons Trench in the desert, leaving him with a bottle of water. Stigman delivers the cash to his CO, Quince, at the Camino Rio Hotel. The officer does not appear surprised that Trench was DA, but he is disappointed that Stigman did not murder him. He claims the money will be moved to a location in Corpus Christi, 
and he dispatches a team to the desert to finish Trench off. Meanwhile, Trench fumbles through the desert until he comes across some self-proclaimed border patrolmen. He quickly disarms them and takes their dune buggy. He travels to a veterinarian to have his bullet wound treated. Stig has taken the crew to where Trench is meant to be. Quince is enraged and orders the crew to assassinate Stigman. Stig, on the other hand, anticipated the double cross and escaped in a thrilling cat-and-mouse game. Meanwhile, Earl has tracked down the veterinarian who treated Trenchy's wound. The vet plays stupid, but the dune buggy outside has alerted them. In the worst game of Russian roulette ever, he eventually verifies Trench's presence but refuses to reveal any further information. Trench followed Deb to the Camino Real Hotel. He realizes she is there to meet her boyfriend, but he interrupts her. Something isn't right, but he says he's going to his boss's house to inform him on the issue. Unfortunately, Earl arrived to Jessup first. Trench arrives while he's grilling him. Jessup is shot, and Trench is exposed to a game of Russian roulette. Fortunately, he wins, but Jessup is shot. Earl shoots Jessup three more times with Trench's gun. Trench is now on the hook for his boss's death. Earl wants his money. Trench goes over to Stig's place, but it is empty. Stig is on the roof across the street, peering down at him with a military-grade rifle sight. After some banter, Stig finds his instincts were correct. Trench is a kind guy, and he assists him in escaping the hit team dispatched by his commanding officer to assassinate him. They both flee, only to reunite the next day at the home of Pappy's mistress. They apprehend Rico and lead a spectacular vehicle chase into the desert, fighting it out until they reach Taunt. They take him to a garage for interrogation, Deborah's garage. It is here that we discover Earl as CIA. They took $43 million from a clandestine government program. While Trench is talking to Deb in the kitchen, Stig notices movements out of the corner of his eye. Someone is here. It's a big hit squad. Pappy escapes amidst the tumult. Trench, Stig, and Deb get into a car and rush away. Just as Trench is questioning Deb about how Stig's team knew where to find him, they are hit by a large truck and immediately encircled by Pappy's gang. Pappy has them hanging upside down in a barn on his ranch. He pisses on his own hands before taking an axe handle and working it over. Stig and Trench disclose that they have the money and plan to give it to Pappy. Suddenly, Pappy is summoned from the barn. Earl is here. Pappy is irritated by Earl's condescending attitude, so he decides to seize Earl's money. The fellas have twenty-four hours to return it, or Deb will die. He presumably grabbed her once he got the boys. After crossing the border, they steal a car to get to the base. Stig knows the money is there because Quince informed him during their meeting at the Camino Real Hotel. They stop at an old Navy buddy's shop to buy some extra gear before heading to the base. Except there is no plan to get to the base where Quince keeps the riches. Stigman stages an insane gate crash and drops Trench off at Quince's office before leading the MP on a wild goose chase. He stops at the Admiral's headquarters and narrates his remarkable story, while Trench approaches Quince. Trench admits that he knows Quince is Deb's lover. Now that the money isn't on base, he realizes Deb has it. The clock is ticking. The Admiral admires Stigman's honesty but he avoids involvement in the complex situation. He orders Stigman to be removed from the base and dispatches a SWAT team to apprehend Quince. Quince flees in the ensuing pandemonium, and Trench creates an explosion to conceal his tracks. He gets an MP car and returns to save Deb. She realizes it's too late for her and informs Greco that Trench has no idea where the money is. Besides, Greco was going to kill them both anyhow. Pappy phones Trench and passes the phone to Deb. She apologizes to him in tears as he attempts to persuade her to tell Greco that he has the money. She genuinely intended to adore him. Too late. Greco kills her, leaving Trench on the line. He meets Stig in the buddy's shop. Stig seeks vengeance. To kill everyone, but Trench is beaten. He still cared about Deb. He has lost all of his fighting spirit. Trench returns home after a lengthy drive from Corpus. Deb's lifeless body has been dropped there. He is noticeably shaken, but he finds a ring Deb has worn during her encounters. She constantly changed the ring to the opposite hand after she left Trench in their motel room. He returns to the room and finds the money on the baseboard of the bed. 
He calls Earl to arrange a meeting. Cut to Stig on Pappy's ranch. He drove the getaway car there, and claims to have the money in its trunk. He's one guy against another. A ranch filled with blood thirsty medicines, or is he? Quince arrives with a strike team and uses an RPG to eliminate some of Pappy's guys. While Quinn and Pappy are discussing a division of the money, Earl arrives in a military helicopter. Only the money is absent now. Trench arrives in a candy apple red 64 Impala, loaded to the brim with Earl's money. Trench and Stig will be allowed to walk freely as part of their agreement. While thankful, Stig cannot believe Trench will let them get away with it. Trench has a plan. He blasts up the car, launching millions of dollars into the air while getting cover. Pappy is injured in the subsequent mayhem, and the goons are eliminated, leaving just Earl, Quinn, Trench, and Stig in a genuine Mexican standoff. Earl tries to talk himself out of the dilemma. They have cash stashed in at least twenty banks. Nothing changes with this small speed boost. Trench uses Stig's incredible aim to take out Quince, while Stig caps Earl. On their way out of the ranch, they provide Pappy a little more lead for his cruel murder of Trenchy's only real love. Trench injures Stig's leg as retaliation for shooting him. Pappy's housemaids collect wads of intact cash as they walk off into the sunset, cut to the pair investigating another bank in a nearby small town. Stig inquires about their donuts, and the waitress says they stink, which is a good indication. Trench takes out a stack of one hundreds as a gratuity. Stig is perplexed and realizes Trench didn't hand in the whole cash. He devises a plan for them to share halfway which Trench jokingly doesn't agree to. Thanks for watching. If you are new don't forget to subscribe for more of these recaps. Until next time, have a nice day.